It's time again for Fishing Tales with Mike Sakamoto. I'm off to catch my fishing tails. Hang them up high with a silver nail. Gonna bring back another fishing tail. So I can tell everybody my big, big fishing tail. Hi! I'm Mike Sakamoto, and thanks for joining me on Fishing Tales. Hey, the octopus are on the reef. So on today's show, I team up with Clarence Adams and Tony Codero off of the Wai'anae Coast and hop on their boat named the Nalanikai and try for Kona Crab and the octopus. So don't go away, we'll be right back with the Nalanikai Fishing Tales. It was about 7 o'clock and the day was clear off the Waina Hills and on this morning, I'm heading out on the 35-foot Stamis named the Nalani Kai owned and skippered by Clarence Adams of Waina. And on this day, our objective is to first head out and find a sandy area to drop two strings of Kona crab traps. Once that's done, we'll head to Kaina Point and drag two lehu shells and see if we can snag a few octopus. Also with us and on the deck is Tony Codero, diver, fisherman, and retired iron worker. He's fished these waters for as long as he can remember, and his biggest marlin weighed in at 599 pounds. More impressive is the 242-pound yellowfin tuna that he landed a few years back. On the bridge and at the controls is Clarence Adams himself. His favorite style of fishing is trolling, but also enjoys bottom fishing for the Onaga, Ehu, and Opakapaka. Paka. His biggest fish is a blue marlin that tilted the scales in at 751 pounds. And like Tony, Clarence has landed monster tunas. His ahi went 267 pounds, a real trophy. And within minutes, Clarence had us on the Kona Crab spot and Tony was ready to start. Okay, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna let out about 150 feet of line. Yeah. And then he's gonna circle, get on the, on our landmark, and then we're gonna start laying it out. So how many nets on the string? Well, we normally bring 50. He told me he bought uh, 40 to this. So we only had two strands of 20 in each strand. Oh, for oh, the Hilo guy normally just put 10, like I told you before, you know. You guys well, I guess because Hilo gets so much crab. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Because we land high, we go land high. Six feet of water, you're catching big crab. Yeah. Yeah. One, two. Here he goes, Darren. I mean, uh, yeah, Tony. So all of the rope is going to go out, Tony? No, about 150 feet, you stop him. OK. Then lock him to the cleat down there, and then he will spin the boat around. Then... Oh, tie him to the cleat? Oh. Yeah. And then we went... How do I know when 150 feet? Yeah, I sight. Oh, I bought, OK. Yeah. 150, 160, whatever. Okay. 170, no problem. OK, here you go. That's only about 50 feet. A little bit more. A little bit more. Yeah, we'll okay, get ready. So that's, Tony, that's going to anchor one side of the net. Right, the this on one end. Okay. 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 Ready? So that holds down the net. One end of the net lined down. Yeah. Okay. As you can see, Kona crab nets have a line connected to only one side of the net and the net's mesh is very fine nylon cordage. The intent is to simply entangle the crab by its thorny legs and not to scoop them up or trap them like other crab nets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the reason for the counting is because Captain Clarence wants nets placed on the main line every eight seconds apart. If the counting and clipping of crab nets goes according to plan, we'll have placed 20 nets on one length of rope and enough line to put an anchor at each end. Six, seven, eight. Okay, every eight seconds. Oh, so you get 40 nets with floaters on each end? 20 nets with floaters on each end. Oh. Two sets of 20, yeah. so we get 40 nets Oh, total. so you got another bunch of rope over yeah. here. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Container. 
Okay. Oh, I thought you was gonna put another 20 nets no, on no. there. Okay, they go to the floor. So that's one set of nets that are out and right now attracting hungry corner crabs. Captain Clarence again checks his landmarks and GPS readings and lines up his boats for the dropping of the second string of 20 nets on another sandbar that he knows. And since we now know the routine, we should be able to deploy the nets in no time at all. Almost send the fly fighting chair and all. Man. So about 150 feet of rope well. Yeah, about 150 foot of rope. Then you put on the first lid. And put on the first put lid. This up. Yeah, as soon as he circles around. Yeah. Okay. Well, as soon as he circles around. Yeah. Stay wet. Okay, call it. Okay. There goes the lid. If you take a good look at the nets, you'll see torn holes and shredded lines on each net. This is where the stingray and other fish have eaten the entangled crabs or bait right off the nets. Okay, here we go. Now Adam was saying that you guys make the bait small because you want the, the crab to come right in the center of the net. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to be uh, overfeed them again. Right, you know, like attract a lot of other things on there, yeah? Like ulua and stuff. Ulua, the kahala, the stingray. Kahala, stingray, especially. A friend of mine went down 200-something uh, feet to go see what was eating his crabs all the time, and he found out it was the hey, manu, the stingray. Oh, that's what it was? Yeah. He said the stingray actually lying down on the, the net, eating the They're crab, lying. yeah. Okay, the float already connected already. Yep. You get good crew and they already thinking, you know. <laughs> okay, that's it. So now we wait 20 minutes. Yeah. Thereabouts. That's it. Come and get them. Come on, crabs, be hungry today. The sun was still low on the Waianae coast and the 20-minute wait was up and we were now heading for the corner crab floater to start retrieval. First things first, I gaffed the floater line and unclipped it and will stash it away to make sure that the deck is clear. As for bringing up the line, it's going to be done by hand and it will take some time and a bunch of sweat. Some commercial corner crabbing boats use hydraulic winches or pinch pullers since they'll be dropping up to 10 to 20 sets of nets a day. We only have two sets, so pulling by hand is the easiest way. Okay, we got the lid. That's the lid. So it looks like one piece of stainless steel. It sure is. Yeah. <laughs> Fancy lid. First trap. Got a crab on the second net. You can see them already. That's my bait. It looks like a crab. The reason that Captain Clarence can see the crab is because corner crabs are bright orange in color so they can be seen from quite a ways away. They spend their life buried under the sand and have been known to reach up to two pounds. All right, show them up. That's a eating size. Sounds good to me. As for the corner crab itself, it's caught only during specific seasons set down by the state's Department of Land and Natural Resources Aquatics Division. Eating size, eh? Yeah. So what do we do? Just leave them on the deck? Yeah, just leave them on the deck. And then you can pull the next crabs. There's some more crabs coming up. In Hawaii, the season is closed May through August, and the minimum size that can be sold is four inches long or wide across the carapace. Yeah, this one will let go. Okay. Also, spearing or taking or even holding crabs with eggs is illegal. Well, the rest of the nets were bare, but we had a few crabs that would be more than welcome on the dinner table. So it has a crab or is that bait? Besides corner crabs, Clarence has brought up kuahonu, box, Hawaiian red pincher, and the alakuma crab, also known as the 7-Eleven. The most common Thanks thing to come up was an octopus. Change our luck. Different pull up. The next one I gotta pull the whole, whole, the whole string. Okay. So Tony, that's the end. That's the end. Now we go to the next one. To the next one. So you give me the honors of pulling that one up. I'll, I'll pull up the float up to the lid. And oh, then, thanks. Uh, and then I'll let you take over. <laughs> the rest is mine. <laughs> now nah, we can rotate. So once we stored the second corner crab rig away, 
Captain Clarence found the second floater and brought us up close so we could pick up the line and start the retrieval process all over again. This set has been sitting on the sandy bottom a bit longer and could mean more crabs on the nets or more crabs eaten off when only legs remaining. Maybe we turn off the engine, the crab jump on. Maybe. Tony, our friend is lonely. Yeah. yeah. Get him some company in it, Buck. If our intention was to sell the crabs, Captain Clarence would make sure that the crabs were well aerated or placed in the live well or ikima. Wholesalers will not accept dead crabs because they tend to ruin the entire catch. I can, I can feel them biting. I can feel them biting. I feel them biting. Well, I hope your feelings is right. <laughs> There's a lead. Oh, hey, progress. Oh, Mike, you good. You got a crab. Hey, all right. There you go. All right. So what is that? Eating site? Yeah. Earlier, Clarence had told me that the most they caught on one net was 11 crabs. I can imagine 11 stuck on one net like that. That's a bunch, eh? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, it's a good size. Go, Mike. Oh, go. all right, go, all right. Mike, go. Now that's what I call a good size corner crab. Besides boiling the crab, another method is to simply salt the crab and eat it raw after the salt has saturated the meat. Now oh, that's a weird looking crab. Look a giant uku, yeah. So they said you get them, they get them in Australia too. Yeah. In Hawaii, there are two types of crabs. One, the swimming crab, such as the kona and the kuahono, or white crab. Their rear legs have paddle-like blades, which help them swim and burrow into the sand. The other types are walking crabs. The ama and alakuma fall into this category, and they look much like spiders. Well, I bet you kona crab guys get big muscles, eh? <laughs> Say, Mike, we're going to throw this one back so he lives to another day. Oh, let me see now. You got a, not a small one on that net down there. Oh, cute little guy. Okay, over the side. Well, you guys get good, eye, You guys can see him. Okay, by the time the crab hits the bottom, something eat him. What do you mean? Something will eat him. Before he even hits the bottom? Yeah, sometimes. Oh, it's another. another. Well, that's why I said you had a small one. You remember, you remember what I was telling you about they always attack the pinches first? Oh, yeah. You see the pinch are gone, eh? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, always eat the pinches. Oh, you, got, you got crab on the next net. You got crab on the next net, all right. Hey. I'm doing good, eh? Go so you can pull the whole thing, Mike. Might as well. <laughs> yeah, you got several on there, Mike. Oh, right oh. on. Yeah, look like two wow. or three on top there. Oh, oh yeah, look at one. this. It's look at this. Name. Don't get two. Oh, no. Hard to tell. Yeah, oh, look at this. Better be gentle so the thing don't fall off. Wow, it's all right. Yeah, I need five for this. Yeah, hey, <laughs> pretty good. Eh? I get it. Is that about the average size? Yeah. Oh, that's a lot of meat. Eh? Yeah, they, they get bigger too. They get bigger. Yeah, I could feel that one pulling when I was coming out. <laughs> I was fighting it. Eh? Yeah, that's the real fish and tails, man. Yeah, I tell you. <laughs> so what is the going rate per pound of this? It's, uh, it depends on the size, yeah? Yeah. Like that, they're probably about five, six, something a pound. Wow. The smaller ones, yeah, like four. Because I was just Chinatown yesterday, and that's, sort of, that's the kind of price I was looking at. Oh, that's a mean pinches on these guys, too. Eh? That's, yeah. a, that's a male. Yeah. Yeah. How about a horn? What do you mean? See the... You smart over here? Yeah. Yeah. So if the female would be rounder? Yeah. Be smaller? Or smaller? And then round. See this oh, one? yeah. That's the female. Yeah. Because it is more over here? Yeah. Oh, so... Oh. Corner crab, you cannot tell uh, by the yeah. tail like the other crabs. Yeah, the other crabs. Because they're all the yeah. same, see? But you tell by the oh. horn. Oh. I was going to ask you that question. OK. Well, he wants to pinch me, so... <laughs> A little bit upset, I think. <laughs> we can catch him, man. Yeah. <laughs>
all the crab nets are up and the Nalanika is now headed toward Kayana Point where we will try for the octopus. The crab will be prepared for dinner along with some octopus which we will hopefully snag with the rigged up and weighted cowry shell. In 30 minutes we were there. So this is the spot. Yeah. So we're looking about 26. 26 paddles. Yeah. So we're going to drift this way. We'll drift this way. Oh, that way. Yeah. So it's like a submerged pinnacle? Yeah, it's all flat. No coral. It's okay. all. You can see the bottom is just real flat. Okay. All right, let's trap. Okay. Once Captain Clarence double checked his landmarks, he turned off both engines and came out on deck to show me the Lehu Shell Taco Rigs. So, Clarence, this is it. That's it. Uh, this is uh, supposed to be the better one. I'll let you use it so we let you pull all the way today instead of Tony. <laughs> okay. So, three real sharp uh, spikes. Yep. With a. Uh, this looks like about what? Three, about four three pounds. pounds. Yeah. Now, this is what the octopus wants to eat, right? The right. Lehu, the cowrie. What's the best color? Dark link, dark brown link? Uh, it depends on uh, the time of the day, the morning or afternoon. Uh -huh. But what do you like to do in the morning when it's like this? You like the light ones. Oh. Okay, so now we drop them down 20 something fathom. And then this actually crawls on the bottom. Yeah, it, it drags on the bottom. What you need to do is you let out your line so you get a good scope and you can feel the drag real okay. good. Okay. Then what happens? They jump on top of this they thing? They jump on it. Uh, they want to eat the shell. They want to get to the shell. Mm -hmm. What I normally do is. Like I say, when you feel a weight on it, then you shake the line. Instead of just yanking one time, you shake it. Get the, get the squid kind of excited. Okay. Then he'll grab it. Then you jerk him. Okay. Once you jerk, you can't stop. Pull him up real quick. Pull him up real quick. Okay. So, me and Tony. You and Tony. Okay. Let's do it. Well, Tony Codero has one Lehu shell rig, and I have one, and we quickly toss them over the side. As the line unwinds from the wooden device commonly used by bottom fishermen called a waku, which in Japanese means frame, the shell rig neatly lands on the bottom some 150 feet below. As described by Captain Clarence, the lehu shell, which is the Hawaiian name for the kari, lands on the bottom in an upright position and begins to slide and crawl on the sand and coral. While Tony and I concentrate on the crawling lehu rig, Captain Clarence started putting the Kona crabs in the ice. He told me that the taco also loves to eat the Kona crab, but these are for us. Nibbling. Don't get me excited. Don't get you excited. Suddenly, Tony's shell stopped moving and now had a spongy and sluggish feeling. You feeling something? Yeah, I think I'm vibrating. Uh, so now what? The vibration when it stopped, yeah. Shake them. Now, so he grabbed the little shell better. Yeah. Okay. You feel like the animal trying to run away, yeah? Oh, so yeah, yeah. Squeeze more hard, yeah? Okay. Give him. There you go. <laughs> All yeah. right. That's the way. Pull him, man. Pull him. <laughs> ah, you got to go faster. Than that. <laughs> <laughs> you go too fast. You rip him off the leg. <laughs> So now what you said, make sure I don't let the taco touch the side of the boat, right? Yeah. What happens when he touches the side of the boat? We crawl on the <laughs> One of us gotta jump in. One of us gotta Tony, jump in. you gotta pull faster than that. So what are you gonna see when the thing comes up? You're gonna see a whitish gray spot, green. Whitish gray. Oh, there, 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 there. That's the guy. That's the guy, okay. Yeah. All right, you man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I just shake the net before it come out. Just pick, shake the pick net. Pick the net. Yeah. Well, what happened? It fall back in the bottom. Fall back in the bottom. Oh. All right, Tony. How big you think? Uh, oh. Three, four pounds. Yeah, I'm that guy. Yeah. The octopus is a carnivorous, eight-armed mollusk related to squids and cuttlefishes, and found in all temperate and warm seas. Usually living in the shallows, some octopus have been found in more than 11,000 feet of water. Okay. Right on, Tony, man. You're too good, boy. Well, that's one taco that's going into the bucket. In the meantime, our lehu shells were on the bottom and hopefully proving irresistible to an octopus. Once again, Tony felt the change in the movement of the shell, so he hauled backwards and started pulling in line. There you go. There you go, Tony. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, man. 
It's a monster. What do you think, bigger? Really and harder, so it's gotta be bigger. It's gotta be bigger. And he's pulling slow. <laughs> he's pulling slow. Wait till I pull, mine gonna be real slow. <laughs> oh yeah, that's on taco, right? He got him. He got him. He no got him. stop, Tony. Opa, there we go. Yeah, <laughs> Tony, all right. Oh, oh that's big. that's bigger than that one. Yeah, Upset too. <laughs> he's pissed off. Huh. See the small crab pincher get in his mouth? No, I didn't see that. Like a small crab, the pincher. Oh, that's a good size one. It's a big one, yeah. That looks like about nine pounds. Really, eh? Felt a yeah. little heavier. Like you said, you tap the net, it actually go back down, huh? Yeah. Say, we are traditional. Hey! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're too good. All right. Mike. That is, that's Mike. big one. Okay. You got one yeah. on here. Yeah. Let me hook you down. Yeah. See that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you got him, man? I think so. A little heavier? A little bit heavier. Okay. There he is. There Look go. at him. There's the color. There go. Keep going, Mike. Keep going. Keep You're going. almost there. Go away Keep from going. the boat. Go away okay. from the boat. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, <laughs> Mike. Wow. <laughs> oh, nice size. All oh, right, guys. Nice size. Oh, one. yeah. Yeah. Boy, we got some big octopus on that trip. I'd like to say a special thanks to Clarence Adams and Tony Cordero for inviting me on that trip. I had a really good time. Well, hope to see you again next week for another fishing tale. Next week on Fishing Tales, Mike heads to the island of Molokai, where he will first take a mule ride down to Kalau Papa and then join friends for some fun shoreline fishing. Fishing equipment provided by Penn, whose reels have been setting standards and records for over 55 years. And now Penn's fishing systems include quality rods and downriggers too. Set some records of your own with Penn. Inner Island Air Transportation provided by Aloha Airlines, the official airline for Mike Sakamoto's Fishing Tales. Accommodations on Oahu provided by the Pagoda Hotel, the Kama'aina's Choice. Transportation provided by Budget. With over 30 years of experience, it's no surprise we're Hawaii's favorite rental car. In Hilo, Mike shops at S. Tokunaga store, a must place for fishermen. Custom made rods, service and repairs, quality tackle and diving equipment.